it's such an honor to be with everyone this afternoon and thank you so much for taking the time and and, and kind of taking the time out of your treatments just to have a little chat uh, you know you and i have been a part of the teenage cancer trust family now for our entire lives thank you so much also for allowing us to kind of ask lots of questions we're just interested to know i guess how covid has affected your treatment or or how you've been feeling sort of with the pandemic I've been receiving treatment for relapsed Hodgkin's lymphoma. I relapsed just before COVID started. So I've got sort of like a background of when it wasn't COVID and when it was. Yeah. It's completely different. It's affected pretty much everything. Um, I've had treatment pushed back because like, I'm going to be receiving a stem cell transplant and that just got pushed back. Uh, I'm currently going through the chemo before that. And it's it's just completely different. I think for me it's been difficult because I'm in remission now so I've already had all my treatment last year um, and I was saying earlier that you're just constantly waiting with cancer so you're, like before you get diagnosed you're waiting you're like stressed out waiting for your results then you get diagnosed and you're waiting for your treatment to end so you can go back into your normal life and you know have your life back and um, so then to be told that you have to shield for a certain amount of time and everyone that you love and have around you has kind of like you know you can't see them anymore mm. it's really difficult and I think my nurse actually told me that I could still get out for walks once a day even though I was shielding but that's the only time you actually get to go outside for the whole day that one time so it can be really tricky and I think trying to navigate remission is really hard in the normal world so to do it in lockdown and be left with all your thoughts and just be really realizing everything that happened it's so difficult I feel you know that that moment of reflection has mm. been so such a it's been eye-opening but very yeah. so scary because it leaves you alone with your with your thoughts and then yeah. all manners of things can can flood in exactly i don't think i ever realized how much my self-esteem had been affected until now until i had to sit down and face it callum i saw your um um microphone come off and then went on again <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i was just going to um, expand on kind of the aspect of shielding but with like with my treatment, it's been because it's it started before lockdown. It started in October, um, but it's quite it's it's still in the intensive stage. And I have my last intensive chemo next week, and that's when I should start to settle down. Yeah. Um, but I'm not. It's been hard to shield because I have to come into the hospital like several times a week, and um, you know it's always to have like a blood transfusion or you know things to keep my body going and it also means me me immune system is very low so mm. it kind of uh i think that that can add to add to the uh, the i don't know it can it can add to the that anxiety i suppose yeah. when you kind of you're forced to come out your cave as i always say like you're forced to come out when you kind of just want to you know stay in stay safe mm. um and you're forced to come out and spend the day in hospital or Sometimes it might be longer, depending on you know what, how how you are. But it still, it still is a worry. Mm. You're totally on your own, right? When you're going in there. To have yeah, yeah. So I've spent um, times in the in the wards for over a week, where you you are alone for, you know, like, like I said, not twenty three hours a day, because even the nurses, there's a stage where they seem to try to spend less time with you in. So to, to reduce the contact um so you are just alone with your thoughts interesting that you're talking you know talking about you know linking being there be, being there virtually for for everyone i mean i know you know we're talking today over you know on, on zoom and i wish that we could be together in person doing this um but what's that what's that you know been like i mean reaching out to the community and and talking and has that been you know i mean you know the teenage cancer trust are trying to are doing so much to be able to bring people bring people together but um you know it's it's been must have been quite a challenge it's been totally different like he's been putting on bingo and pictionary and they've they've been hilarious wow. like at first i thought it was a bit cringe thinking oh no i don't want to do that and yeah just actually taking part it's been a lot of fun and let you actively look forward to it as well. Yeah. I've really enjoyed the things they've put on. Um, I've always struggled with my body image way before I got diagnosed with cancer and anxiety and mental health issues. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I got, I was quite recently diagnosed in February um, and now have 
a couple of scars <laughs> um and was the, i was always thinking to myself god i know that you know everything's just going to plummet and actually the the complete opposite has happened uh, and i put that completely down to the support that i've had through the lockdown uh, i've attended body image workshops with uh, uh, with teenage cancer trust um and different sessions and it is it's boosted my confidence i can't believe it like i'm i'm blog quite a lot on instagram and yeah. uh, i actually post more photos of myself now you know showing my scars yeah. uh, and everything and feel yeah. better about myself i love hearing that darcy i have a big old scar down my back and i'm proud to show it off i, I, I was going to ask you about that actually um because i saw pictures of you in your wedding dress and it inspired me that you were so uh, open about it and wanted to have it on show so I've got a quite visible scar on my neck uh, and I'm going to become a teacher in September and I've been panicking and stressing about trying to find clothes to cover it up from kids and having to explain that but you know seeing things like that and seeing people sort of empowered and and, and showing it is sort of made me feel that I, I you know I shouldn't need to worry about that no it's so I think it's so beautiful it's such a wonderful part of yourself you know it kind of tells a wonderful story a, for you a, probably a very harrowing one but it tells a, a part of your life that you can share and also be a role model for other people the teenage cancer trust are trying to are doing so much to be able to bring people bring people together but um you know it's it's been must have been quite a challenge we we transferred a hundred percent of our working week onto a digital platform wow so we've been able to run quizzes where music tuition one-to-ones we've got more people actively participating in stuff than we probably ever had before you know we have all these amazing events that they put on during lockdown but yeah. then when i was really struggling a few weeks ago with my body image and you know i always kind of like had my boyfriend had my friends and would go to them and be like oh you know relying on them so to be on my own i kind of realized that i needed someone to talk to and not having a counselor was difficult so i remember just messaging steve and being like oh my god what do i do who do i go to and he put me in touch with people so then from there i've had so much help and so many you know, good ideas of how to listen to podcasts and go on runs and stuff. Um, and I think it just, there's so much more to what they do than just the things that we love going to as well. We should play bingo as well. That sounds, it sounds so much fun. <laughs> I bought some fun glasses today, so if we do want to play later, we can. <laughs> I mean, it, over, the, over the years of the journeys of uh, the organisation, I, I mean, it's remarkable to see the individuals um, that are a part of Teenage Cancer Trust and, and what they've been, as you rightly said, been able to deliver 100% of their working week um, to, to carry on that support. It's been, it's remarkable. So, you know, and at a time when we're losing hope in so many ways, it's, it's I feel very um, honoured to be a part of it, honoured to be a part of it. By even sharing this, this story now is, is, is really quite cool. And I think, you can continue to do that day to day with what you've gone through. So thank you from, from me. And absolutely. absolutely. I can only echo that. I mean, the last few months have been tough for everyone in different ways, but they've been particularly tough for young people with cancer. So thank you so much to all of you for what you've shared. Um, I've learned loads just from within the last hour. Talk, ask for help, keep going. Um, I think what you're sharing is not just your stories, but it's your learnings and your perspectives. And, and I'm hugely grateful for that.